and you were you flew on the uh, the shuttle, the big white one, right? Yep, on Discovery and on Atlantis. Yeah. Right. So before they retired that model. Yes. Yes. Right. I remember they f- they didn't. I uh, did they. F- I don't know if they. F- I think they flew it over because they put it in some museum. I think they had it here in DC for a little bit. Um, yeah, actually, Discovery is over at uh, Udvar Hazy for with Smithsonian. Oh wow! So it's there, like sitting, you know, like it was on the runway, and then oh my god, Endeavor's out at the LA Science Center, and um, Atlantis is here in Florida at the Kennedy Space Center, and they're all in different configurations. It's really cool. That's to see cool. How they've displayed each one a little bit differently, and then the the landing test, landing and approach vehicle. Um, uh, in, is on the Intrepid. That's uh, why am I drawing a blank on the name of that one? Uh, Enterprise is uh, wow. on the Intrepid Museum in New York City. So, yeah, they're spread around the country for people to be able to see them. Those it's are amazing. incredible. Yeah, like so, yeah. you're you're strapped in. You're you're flying on the Discovery, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, please <laughs> tell me your experience and, and, and walk me through what's like, I mean, I, I'm just picturing like thousands of controls, lights going off, you know, Houston, uh, Houston's like, Hey, Hey, Nicole, uh, you know, we have a problem. Like that's. Yeah. Thankfully we didn't. Well, we heard some of that, but it wasn't because of us, <laughs> <laughs> but it was, um, I'll tell you nothing. I, you know, I worked at Kennedy space center for 10 years on the space shuttle program. I watched how many launches. I, right. I don't know. And in my mind, I had convinced myself, I knew what this was going to feel like. I talked to other people who'd done it, you know, watched all the videos and, and, and watched the launches and nothing, I mean, nothing prepares you for what it actually feels like. I think there's so much emotion and then just like physical stuff going on. And on the space shuttle, you know, we'd get out there to the launch pad a few hours ahead, you know, you get all strapped in. And of course, because the vehicle's pointing you know, it's like the noise, nose of the airplane pointing up now. Literally. So you're, you're laying on your back, you know, in the seat and um, getting comfortable. And I mean, I remember napping because, you know, you're out there so far in advance and, and the crew didn't really get involved, like actively involved in the countdown until like half an hour, 20 minutes before. Right. And so, so you want to be, you know, comfortable and relaxed. And, uh, but holy moly, when that, like 10, nine, eight starts. Oh, that's, that's when you're like, Oh, wow. I might, I might actually go to space today. Yeah, I'm going to not <laughs> you know? earth. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then it was this, this, you know, that cadence of the countdown and mm-hmm. then six seconds with the space shuttle is when all of a sudden all that fuel and that big orange tank would start flowing to the three little engines on the back of the shuttle. Wow. And they would start, and I remember always thinking, oh, that'll be really, like, I'll really start. But it was, it was like this little vibration, could kind of hear a rumbly noise. Um, the engines are at an angle on the back of the orbiter, the uh-huh. like airplane looking part of the yeah. shuttle. And so when they lit, the whole thing tipped wow. forward like 10 feet and then back. And then when it was vertical, that was synced up with zero on the countdown. And that's when those two big white solid rocket boosters lit. Oh, like like six million pounds of thrust, you know? Right. And so that was like, you know, out of nowhere, it was like getting kicked from behind, getting kicked (laughs) from the front. Three of you starting to sit on top of you and shaking like, like you never imagined, like wondering if you were ever on a launch pad. I mean, honestly, like just the dynamics of your body. I, 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 I can't even describe it, but it, and I think back like, you know, with the designers of this vehicle, because for about the first minute and a half uh, after a shuttle launch, the crew really can't do anything but monitor systems, see what's going on. For, really? You know, you, you can't abort yourself. Not It's like just right. you're it's al- so along much... for the ride. Yeah. yeah. You are just along for the ride for the first minute and a half. And I think, I'm like, man, I don't know if they did that deliberately for this reason, but are we are human? We have to react to that energy yeah. coming through us, you know. Really? So I'm like, it's like no no control. Boom! High five yeah. just happens yeah. with whoever's next to you. Wow! A smile on your face just happens. You know, there's like the woohoo. Yeah. You know, you're like thinking, and it's just this like overwhelming stuff going on physically, physically and yeah. just you know emotionally and. And then like two, two, two and a half minutes goes by and those big boosters separate with this big boom and flash. And mm-hmm. then you're not shaking anymore, but you're still accelerating. So you feel like you've got three of you sitting on your chest. Right. 
And, um, and then it, you know, six minutes later, the big orange tank separates and you're in space. I mean, you are orbiting, you're, you went from zero to 17,500 miles an hour. That fast? In eight and a half minutes. And now oh. you're circling the planet. It is, just, now you're what? like floating, you know? The most really? incredible thing. 